So this is our new project window for IntelliJ and we'll give our project a name. I'll name mine Java GUI. And for language, we'll leave at Java. Build system will be Gradle. And for our Gradle DSL, I'll select Kotlin. Next, under advanced settings, your group ID, make a note of this. You'll probably need this later. So you most definitely will need this later. I'll name mine Joshua Matos. All right, now you can click Create. When you first load your project, Gradle will start to download some dependencies. And it'll use the build.gradle to do this. Mine will be a little bit different than yours. I've already configured the project so that we can get started. There'll be a link in the description below to the GitHub repository with this build.gradle in it. And as you can see here, I have a group as well as some additional dependencies and configurations. All right, let's start building our application out. So the first thing we'll do is on our default package, we'll go to new Java class and we'll call it car. And from this menu, select record. A record is essentially a Java class that has no setters. We'll get more into records in a later course. For now, the first thing you'll do is pass in a string and call it make. And then we'll make another string and we'll call it model. And then we'll have a year and we'll make it an integer. We'll also have a color. And then most cars have thins, so we'll make this a string and call it then. Next thing we'll do, let me make this bigger. The next thing we'll do is we'll override the two string method that is within the record class. So we'll use the at override annotation. And then here we'll say public string to string. And we'll use Java 17 syntax. So we'll say return. And then we'll use these three quotation marks, which is a multi-line string. Next we'll say make and then we'll use percent %s. Percent %s will be overwritten by a function that we'll call at the end of the string. Next, at the end of the string, we'll call dot format it and then we'll pass in the make model year and color all right next we'll create a new class and we'll call it car inventory all right let's start building our first java gui First, we'll create a J frame. We'll take a string, which will be our title. Next, we'll create uh, text fields and they'll take in a column as an integer. And that's just the size of the text field. We'll create a few of these. And final just means that it can't be overwritten later on. Next, we'll create some panels. Which will take a grid layout.
a status panel to display our status. Next, we'll need some way to store all of our cars. So we'll create an array list. Create our status panel. And we'll give it a label. And later on, we'll be overriding this label to update our status. Make sure you give uh, a string with an empty space. All right, so instead of creating fields like this, I'll show you a different way to go about creating multiple fields or labels. And for this one, we'll say var j label list is equal to list of make sure we have the right import there we go okay now we can pass in our labels benefit of going about it this way is you can uh, use something like a for each to modify each label and I'll give you an example so we'll take a label and then on each one of those labels we'll set the horizontal alignment to it's left by default but you can change this to center Just like that. All right, so let's create another list. Let's call it text fields. And we'll pass in all of our text fields. like that now you got to be careful when you do this um, I want to add these labels to each one of these text fields and I can use something like a for loop because these uh, text fields they're both five and five you got to be careful of index out of bound errors so let's create a bound we'll call it J label lists and we'll get the size of the list and then I'll create a for loop. I'll call this index. And then each one takes a label. So we'll get the J label list and we'll get the label. And then we'll also get the text field. that index starts at zero. Okay, so next we'll set the label for. I'll give it the text field. 
Next, we'll add this to our field panel. So we'll add the label and we'll add the text field. Now let's add some buttons. And we'll have an add button, a delete button, display. Clear and save. Let's add these buttons to our panel and let's create a border, give some space. around our buttons. Okay, so now that you have buttons, let's add some actions to these buttons. So every time we add a button or click the add button, we'll create a car. And we'll get the text fields for the car to inject into the constructor. So. For the year, we'll have to parse it as an integer because it comes back as text. Then we'll actually have to add the car to an array list. And we can update our status label. Okay, for our delete button, we'll need to remove the car from our array list. We'll use the car vin dot equals. these brackets there we go and we'll update the status label just like that we can inline these that's fine all right, let's display using a J-frame to see the list of our cars. All 
very first thing we'll do is we'll say for each car in our array list, we'll print out the car to our console. Next, let's create our frame and we'll call it pop-up frame. And we'll set the layout for our new frame. We'll pass it in the car list panel and we'll say that it will be laid out along its Y axis. Okay, so now we'll create an uh, empty border. This way our panel has space around. This way our panel has a border around it and it's not against the edge of the frame. All right, so next let's add our car to our panel from the array list. And panels can take in HTML, so let's use that to format our text. Java 17 syntax and I'll call dot format it and I'll pass in the car display all of the car information. We'll use paragraph and we'll make the VIN bold. And remember each one of these percent S's will get replaced with one of these fields.
All right, so we'll set the text on the label. We'll make sure there's HTML tags. And we'll pass in our car HTML. And we'll add the car label. All right, next let's show our pop-up frame. So we'll add the panel. We'll set the minimum size and we'll have to pass in the new dimensions class. And we'll get the preferred size of the mainframe. So we'll want this frame to show up close to wherever the main GUI is. So let's go ahead and do that now. What we'll do is we'll get the X coordinate. We'll get its location. And we'll get the width and we'll offset it by 50. We'll also get the Y axis. And here, actually, we can just do minus 50. And then we'll set the location of the frame. This just packs the frame so there isn't a lot of extra room or extra empty space. All right, let's make a clear button. And for our, our clear button, we'll pretty much just set each text field. Uh, we'll clear the text on it, so it clears all of our fields. And we'll update our status label and we'll say cleared. All right, so now we'll save our file and let's save it to a CSV file. It should be easy enough to do. Um, first, let's get the file location and we'll say file and we'll actually use new file. And then we'll use string.format And we'll save it to the desktop. So call desktop and we'll save it as car list.csv. And so to replace the percent %s here, we'll get the home directory for whatever operating system we're on. So we'll say system get emv 
no, we'll say system get property. And then we'll say user dot home. This way we can save on Mac or Windows. Oh, and actually this goes inside there, just like that. So string dot format, the string, comma, and then system get properties, user dot home. All right, so whenever you're writing to a file, you need to use a try catch block. So let's make that now catch and this will be a IO exception. All right, so now that we have our try catch block, we'll write to our file. So we'll use a file writer, say equals new file writer, and we'll pass in the file. And we'll write our headers. Create a string builder. And then for each car in our array list, we'll append it to our string. And so the first thing we'll append will be the VIN. And we'll get the rest of the fields. For CSV, the last line needs to be a new line. And then we'll write it to our CSV. And then we gotta make sure that we close our file. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and show a message saying that the file was saved. Pass in the frame and then a string and we'll get the absolute path. And we can also have a message if it doesn't save. Pretty easy to do, not much to it. Um, next, well, let's make sure that we add our status to our panel. All right, so now that we've added our status panel, we can 
have a container that will control the layout for our J-frame and make sure that our frame is visible. So let's create a container. And this is a J panel and we'll pass in a border layout. Now we can control how our panels appear within our J panel. So we'll add our field panel and we'll say border layout and north. That way this is on the top, then we'll have one in the middle and we'll put our button panel there. Center. And lastly, we'll add our status panel at the bottom. leave that like that. All right, next, let's create another panel. And we'll add spacing. And then we'll add our container. You could also add an empty border to this container, but this way we kind of separate what each one of these is responsible for. All right, so. Let's configure our frame. Let's add the panel. Let's set the minimum size so We'll set the location. We want the location to be in the center of the screen. So what we can do is set the relative location to null and then make sure our frame is visible. Okay. All right, so let's make it so that you can see your application whenever you run your class. So what we'll do is we can get rid of this and you could just call the car inventory class here, but there's a better way to go about doing this and I'll show you how. So let's create a try catch block. And here we'll just catch any exception. Next, we'll want to set the look and feel. And here there's a lot of classes available to you. So you can pick any one that you like, play around with it and see uh, which one you like best. Uh, for now, we'll use this one. Uh, next, we'll call a latch. And you don't have to worry about what this is doing right now. Just know that essentially it's making sure that your application is ready to go before it's displayed on the screen. So we'll call invoke later, which takes in a runnable. And then we'll call the new car inventory here, just like that. We'll start a latch countdown and then here we'll await our latch. 
Okay, now you should be able to run your application. Let's have a look, there it goes. We'll put in a VIN, put in a make, a year, there it goes. Should hit display and see it. All right, so one last thing I wanted to show you, and that is going down to your terminal. And in here, you'll put in Gradle W build. All right, now if you go to your project directory and you open up libs, you'll see your Java GUI jar and in here let's go ahead and open this up in finder all right so we have our java car gui here and i'll copy this to my desktop and what i'll do is i'll open up a terminal and i'll cd to my desktop and then i'll run my java file from here and the command is java jar and then the name of the file and what will happen is we'll run into an error you'll go back to your terminal and you'll use gradle lu shadow jar now back in my Finder, I'll copy this one to my desktop. Okay. Now I'll run the same command. And there goes my application. Now you're able to run this app on any machine. Hey, thanks for sticking around. And if you found any value in this course, be sure to like and subscribe. Be on the lookout for my other videos where we'll take a more in-depth look into Java. All right, mi gente. I'll see you later.